Bermuda Triangle Face. Hello and welcome to another episode of Bermuda Triangle Face. I am Tim. I am Chris. I am Sam. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks for joining us again. Um, first episode of today's Bermuda Triangle Face is um, who would you have as a friend? Uh, who, what celebrity would you have as a friend, and what would you do with them? <laughs> what, 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 what? So if you could choose to have a celebrity friend, yeah. who would it be, and what would you do to them? <laughs> I didn't say to them, did I? Just yeah. Them? Well, so what would you do to them? We'll find out later. I, I obviously went with them. What do you do, do to them? <laughs> Even that sounds a little seedy. Well, I mean, like, you know, if you had a celebrity friend, you'd probably, I don't know, go out doing <laughs> stuff that celebrities can afford to do. You would normally do yourself. Okay, fine. So what you would think about is to them. Oh, no, but I'm just saying, you know, if you had a celebrity friend, there'd be other things you would do with them, I suppose. Yeah. Hmm. No. I think, but, okay, I think... <coughs> For me, my celebrity friend would probably be Mike Portnoy from Dream Theatre. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. Now Flying Colours. Was Adrenaline Mob. Not anymore. Now Winery Dogs. Um, Transatlantic. He's in a lot of bands, but Dream Theatre is what he's most famous for. Mm -hmm. um, he's a drummer. He's one of the best drummers that there is. He's not the best drummer because that's a contentious issue. No one can say any particular person is the best drummer in the world. I'm trying to make sure we don't get trolled. Um, but he seems to be like, I don't know, he's got um, some really cool like space between his bands, all of the different things that he's done musically have been very different, so he was like an um, Avenged Sevenfold covering his drummer for a while, um, which is nothing like Flying Colours, which is a almost pop prog band, which is nothing like Transatlantic, which is like crazy, just like prog, which is nothing like Adrenaline Mob, which is metal. Um, so it's, why would you want to have one? <laughs> because his kind of, the way that he is, is, is so driven and mental that he's always, always doing stuff, which means it must be a really exciting life. Um, if you're kind of part of that, that sounds like it'd be really cool. It's something I obviously, mm. you know, care about a lot and have a lot of interest in. It seems like I would enjoy that. So that that's who my celebrity friend would be. So you'd, so you'd have a lot to in common if you're into all sorts of different types of music. Mm. It's like mm. you know, you've always been into various music of all yeah, sorts of different and I, genres. And I think um, there's things like I was talking. I think the weekend um, about always kind of joking about, you know, talking about this tattoo that I'd wanted, which is a quote from Frank Zappa. It turns out he has that. I didn't know that. Um, but I've been saying that for kind of years. Mm. So that's just, like, I think we would get on very well and it'd be cool to, like, jam with one of my favourite musicians. Okay. Chris, how about you? Who would you want to um, have as a celebrity friend? I'd probably... Mm. I'm gonna go YouTube celebrity friend. Oh yeah, because um, yeah, I don't they know. Can, like, they can. Yeah, they they count. Uh, <laughs> they definitely count. Um, I'm pr probably gonna go with <coughs> any day now. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is me. Um, I'm probably gonna go with Jesse Cox. Okay. Uh, you guys heard of him on YouTube? That's a no. <laughs> no, I, I, I can't say that. I have. No. Okay. Um, he's just. <coughs> He's ridiculously funny. Um, I I love all of his stuff. Um, he always makes me laugh. He kind of do, like does games that are kind of not mainstream a lot of the time. Right. So um, does them? What writes them? Uh, no, he, he plays through them oh, like okay. a gameplay sort of okay. thing. Um, he's just yeah, he's really down to earth. He's incredibly funny. He always makes me laugh, and I just I think. Just like being around him, he, he keeps saying um, he's just like how he is on the, his videos in real life. Um, so this is one thing with like YouTube celebrities. Generally, you'd expect they'd be themselves on camera a lot more. Yeah, because um, a lot of it's going to be blogging and things like that. Where yeah, <coughs> it's not like you know them as an actor and you see them in films. You see them yeah. just talking in videos on the internet. So you'd just... imagine off camera they're pretty much the same sort of people. As you probably already know a lot more. Of their personality and stuff. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I think the YouTube celebrity thing is really weird because you're seeing them for who they are, but they never see you. Yeah, so there's this weird kind of disconnect. Like, I know everything about you, but you know nothing about everyone. Yeah. It feels like you could meet, well, like, like Ray Williams yeah. Johnson, or you could meet, like, you know... Like, um, Toby's Air or something, <laughs> like... Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like, he, cause I used to watch the daily videos that, uh, that Tavuskis did. Yeah. They were daily, so it was like every day, and after a while I kind of got a bit bored and unsubscribed and then subscribed again in the future. Because you don't watch the same thing every day. Um, then wow. you're, It's like you're talking to that person every day. So like yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah. not talking to them, but they're yeah. telling you about what's going on. And they'll talk also like when um, William Johnson was also doing the Breaking NYC videos, which was literally just like fly wall kind of stuff with him, just yeah. walk around the camera cool. saying, oh, well, today I'm going to this audition, I'm going to audition for this thing, and now I'm going to go to this acting class. And it's like, it was almost like you're one of his friends because you're being shown everything he was doing in his personal life. Mm. But yeah, if you bumped into him, you'd have no idea who you yeah. were. Yeah. And probably would have no interest in spending any time with you. Yeah, so yeah. you know you probably go, oh, hey, how you doing? I saw the... Uh... Hey, who are you? Yeah. Get away from me. How's that audition? Had enough of this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who you are. Yeah. So, so, how are you, Tim? Uh, for me, I was, I was thinking about a few. Uh, originally, I was thinking Stan Lee, because I'm a big Stan Lee fan. Mm -hmm. But he is, like, much older. And I don't think we really have as many common interests outside of just like comics and stuff. Who comes? Um, <coughs> so no, I'd awesome. probably go Kevin Smith. Um, yeah. Because Kevin Smith is really big in comics as well. He's done a lot of his own comics. He's done like Marvel comics and independent comics. Uh, and he's done uh, movies. Um, he did all like, the New Jersey films, like, all the James Hunt Bob films. Um, I've watched a lot of the An Evening with Kevin Smith, like DVDs, which he just does yeah. like the talks. And uh, he seems like a really like down to earth cool person, and he's done that. A lot of the stuff he's accomplished, he's done just himself. So when he first did the first Clerks film, he just maxed out a bunch of credit cards, and then made this film. And it's like, right, we have this film now. Someone buy this film off us, please. We have no money. Buy this film, uh, and then managed to get into the film industry. And he's a really big promoter of like YouTube and, and Twitter and, and social media stuff like that now. Because it's people doing stuff. Yeah, because he's like, he's a, if this was around when he was that age, he would have done that. Uh, I mean, he even, we were talking about Ray William Johnson, he was on an episode of Equal Street, presented it mm. once when uh, Ray was off, he did some presenting for that. Um, so, I mean, he's, so he kind of, you know, got the comics, films and, and you know, YouTube videos mm. thing that he obviously is into and does. And that's kind of the stuff I've had to as well, so. So what, <coughs> what would you do to him? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, what, you do to um, it? Do with him? I'm sure, I'm going to have to play this video back and make sure I didn't say do. You, do, you definitely do. said with. I, I must have said do. It do. still sounded silly. Really? Oh dear. Uh, I'd just, do just hang out, them. I suppose. <laughs> um, I'm sure, uh, you know, if you had a celebrity friend, they would probably have ideas of things to do. Um, mm. That's putting a whole lot of pressure on the celebrities right now. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, you know, if I... If, what are they going to do? If, I, if friends come around my house, it's like, let's play a board game or watch a movie. Whereas like, if you're around a celebrity's house, they're probably like, oh, let's go out on the yacht or something, I'd imagine. I would um, thought a lot of them would a bit, want to like, <laughs> yeah. escape from that, though. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't have any celebrity friends. I don't know what they actually do when they just hang out with people. I presume they probably would just watch movies and play games like everyone else. Like humans so, do. Because mm. <laughs> they are kind of humans, I guess. Kind of. Yeah. No, only, only kind of. Only. So um, that kind of covers that. I think mm -hmm. we've all got our points across, mm -hmm. kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, we have had another question in from our during fans, and that was... I'm trying to find a question. <laughs> I haven't put the question in front of us. <laughs> oh. uh, the question is a what if. It was a what if life were like a comic book, was the question. Oh, man. So... Uh, now, actually, me and Sam started talking about this just before we started recording, so yeah, save it for really, the recording. Because yeah. um, I just pointed out, not all comics are um, supernatural or with superpowers and things like that. You can get slice of life comics into standard comics. Yeah. So, I don't know what the ramifications of this question are. Whether it is just, if life is like a comic, uh, like Sam, you said that it would be people would interrupt less. Yeah, no, nobody will be able to interrupt you <coughs> because you have to wait for the speech bubble to finish <laughs> before your speech bubble was got to by the reader. Yeah. Um, Scenery would be a lot more simple. Yeah. So when you walked outside, rather than actually being able to see things in detail, you would just see like an outline of the, of the city. Well, depending on the artist. Yeah, depending on different things. I guess you mm. would be able to... If, like, if life is like a comic, I guess rather than there being different fashions and different kind of genres that people are into, it could be different artists that people are like... Oh, like okay. Instead of different yeah, styles of clothing, different, different... Exactly. Like, yeah. like Comic Jumper. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Actually, you would just be drawn differently. 
But how would that work though? Would it be like when you went to someone's house, you would then be drawn in the style that the house is drawn in? Uh, or would you all be drawn individually? Oh god, yes. Yeah. Or are there going to be weird yeah, style mismatches? Like, what if, you, no, get, what think... if you get married to someone with a completely different like artist to you? Yeah. And what if one person was from a genre of comic where people would die in hilarious ways and then turn into a puff of black smoke and just be a set of eyes that blink and drop to the floor and then they're fine in the next frame and someone else came from a gritty real comic where if people died they just died and then they accidentally killed a friend of theirs because they didn't realise they were drawn in a different style. So a bit like... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so what, Lena yeah. killed my mate the other day, he just came back. It's like, yeah, but he's from a gritty reality, you can't do that to him. He's dead now. That's probably, <laughs> that's probably comic book universes, so all of those would be in a universe and get pushed somewhere and then a bit like Roger Rabbit, how they kind of like fuse together. Yeah, yeah. I suppose um, that like the cartoons can kill each other and be fine because they're cartoons. Yeah. But they, if they tr kill the human, the human will actually die. Hmm. <coughs> but are we then saying that if like if life were like a cartoon, mm -hmm. we've gone down the point of it being drawn or being styled by an artist? Mm. Um, how? Who makes the decisions on who you meet? Yes. Who's and when like time jumps forward as well, because things yeah. would be like you know later and things like that, or you know meanwhile, who would be in control? Is everyone allowed to do things at the same time? Yeah, it's like if the if the um, like page isn't on you, are you just like dead until the, like the frames? Then you're in the next frame essentially. So basically, our collective answer is it's too hard. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Well, then the question needs to be a bit more specific. Really, it's like, what if life were like a particular type of comic? Okay. I think. Well, let's, so let's, let's choose a comic. Yeah, we could simplify and say, what if? Okay, what if life was like? Should we go for Marvel, DC, or something completely different? Um. Uh. So let's just choose. What if life was like the Sandman? The Sandman. So that's part of DC, isn't it, as well? So if life were like Sandman, that would also introduce all the other DC universe. Hmm. Because I know I've seen Sandman when Sandman when he sees meets Constantine. Yeah. And Sandman where he interacts with Batman as well. Mm. So if it were the DC universe, um, I think it would actually be quite a scary place to live. Yeah. Because there'd be people having superpowered fights in the streets all, uh, the, all time. the time. And everything's really <laughs> dark, and everything's in the shadow. Insurance would yeah. be horrific. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but would everyone each have their own comic book? So, like, say you've got that main, like, giant fight in the street, and in the background there's, like, people walking by, we would be one of those people, so would our would our story be like, oh, today I, uh, like, went to work, and there's all this kind of, like, mm. up to, like, page 90, and then, like, page 91, I turned and looked, there's a superpower fight in the street, and then I just carried on to... See, yeah, I, I, I think, think that would actually be... Yeah quite an interesting comic book to have a comic book set in a superhero universe but it follows it from this perspective of someone who's right. not involved Some in it whatsoever. Office block, yeah. yeah, like someone who's just mm. a normal normal person, goes to work and stuff, gets on the train and maybe while he's sat on the train um, a guy dressed up like a lobster threatens to blow up the train and then another guy dressed as a bee comes in and saves the day and he's like, not this again. <laughs> <laughs> B versus lobster. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just making up as I go along. You know, like somebody dressed in a ridiculous outfit. But a bum slug man! <laughs> <laughs> and just saves the day. But, oh, God. It's kind of be a bit annoying. But I think I did have an idea actually for a book once. So I was coming up with loads of different ideas of stuff. And one of them was going to be from the perspective of one of like the main bad guy's henchmen. But he'd be in a situation where he was actually a nice guy. He's a normal guy. He was working as a security guard. But then, like, he was roped into doing it because if he doesn't, he's going to hurt his family or something. So he's kind of being blackmailed right. into being a henchman for a supervillain, and then he has to kind of, like, fight superheroes and stuff. Copyright. So, so like, the bodyguard in one of the... Um, in Dead Rising 3, like, um, he works for, like, one of the weirdos um, on this quest, and if you kill the, like, kingpin dude... The bodyguard's like, just just wait, I was, I was ripped into this, he's, he's <coughs> after my family and stuff. And he comes and joins yeah. you because he's actually... I, I haven't played it, so I'll take your word for it, that yeah. happens. So yeah, that's exactly... exactly Boiler! It's, it's, red red it's not... It's not any main part of any story. Spoiler. Okay. Spoiler. Well, on that horrific spoiler, um, we're going to end I give up. it there. I give up. But, yeah. um, thank, thanks for joining us. Thanks everyone for uh, Chris. <laughs> um, we'll uh, see you next time. Bye. Ta-ta.